Weird sciencey facts that boggle my mind. If you're ever trying to get wet, the one place you can always go is Lake Superior. Now, Lake Superior is obviously the most superior of all the lakes. But surprisingly enough, it wasn't named Lake Superior because of its size, but rather its location. The French were the first Europeans to find it when they were up gallivanting through Canada, and they named it Lac Superior, or however the fuck that would sound in French, which translates to Upper Lake, because, you know, it's the one on top. But despite the name being a reference to its location, its size is no less superior. But telling you that Lake Superior is big is not telling you anything you didn't already know. However, how big is something I'm not sure many people comprehend. Hand. By surface area, it is the largest freshwater lake in the world. It's basically a sea. And by volume, it's a very close second. To start putting this into perspective, there are five Great Lakes. You could take the four other Great Lakes and dump them all into Lake Superior. And to finish filling it up, you'd have to fill up Lake Erie and dump it into Lake Superior three more times. In fact, 10% of all the world's surface fresh water is contained in Lake Superior. If we stopped adding water to Lake Superior and everybody on the planet drank half a gallon of water from Lake Superior every day, it would take 2,300 years before anybody got thirsty. Obviously, there's a lot of water always flowing in and out of the lake, mostly through rivers and streams. But if we were to stop all that water from flowing into the lake, the rivers flowing out would continue running for another 200 years before the lake went dry. If you were to accidentally bump Lake Superior and, you know, knock it off the table and all the water spilled out, it could cover all of North and South America in a foot of water. It's big, like beyond comprehension, big. When you stand next to it, you genuinely feel like you're standing next to the ocean. Complete even with literal ocean-going cargo ships coming and going from port. Not only is it big, it's consistent in its size and depth. Where other Great Lakes will fluctuate three feet on average in depth over the course of a year, Lake Superior only fluctuates about 12 inches. But every single one of those inches accounts for 550 billion gallons of water being added or taken away. And its size means it's more than just a lake. It creates its own weather and its own climate. And yeah, Yes, those are two different things. Anybody from the North Shore won't hesitate to tell you that they can be having a blizzard when it's 80 degrees uh, 40 or 50 miles south. In fact, last summer while I was making a video about our sweltering triple digit heat, my neighbors 80 miles to the north did not hesitate to comment and inform me that it was freezing when they woke up that morning. Literally, like 20 something degrees. But the silver lining of living in a place where occasionally you have to scrape the ice off your windshield in August is that scientists project that Duluth, Minnesota will be the place in the world that is least affected by climate change. Because Superior just doesn't give a fuck what the rest of the world is doing. And the fact that a lake can be so incomprehensively massive that it can literally tell global warming to go fuck itself, well, that is pretty mind-boggling.